scene. When I was growing up, my parents always had foreign exchange students. There would just be people coming in from all these different countries. A lot of the times it was from Japan. So I think it was around the age of 10, and this one foreign exchange student came to visit. And every time they come to visit, they bring presents. So it's kind of like a cool thing while you're a kid growing up. They brought presents for me and my brothers, and he gave me an option DVD. And I had no idea what option was or kind of what it was. But basically, it was like my Bible to the car culture and kind of like set my bar high for like what I wanted to like do when I got into the car scene. My name is Roald Toledo and I drive a 1972 Datsun 510. So the first time I saw a 510, I was in Afghanistan at the time. I got this magazine. I was just flipping through the pages, just like looking at import cars because I was always into the scene for a while and I just see this car and I had no idea what it was. And I asked my buddy next to me, he was a really good close friend of mine, and he explained to me, letting me know that it was a Datsun 510. Knew nothing about the car, but just through the whole deployment when I was out there, all I thought about was this car, and like when I can get home and just basically purchase the car so I can just find out more about it. So how I found this car, I want to say it was like three to four months of searching on Craigslist nonstop, online forums, just kind of waiting to find the right one. I actually ended up finding this one for sale up in San Francisco, and I contacted the guy uh, before it had a VG30 carbureted swap in it. It's kind of, kind of a rare setup to have for the most part, just because they didn't release that carbureted version of the car here in America. When I got to find the car, basically contacted the individual, and I was like, hey, you know, will the car make it to San Diego from, you know, San Francisco? And the guy was pretty straightforward and honest with me. He was like, no, it won't, but give me a week and it'll be able to make it down. And I was like, okay, well, if you make it work and I drive it from there to San Diego, you know, I'll pay your asking price. And basically at the time, my girlfriend and my friend, we just hopped in the car and we drove up to San Francisco to get a car off a guy's promise. But basically we got the car and we drove it down that same night and I honestly think I didn't get it out of fourth gear. Like when I was driving down, I couldn't get into fifth or something like that because I hadn't driven in a long time. It was kind of funny because I burnt a lot of gas driving down from San Francisco. But it was an adventure and I think we just had a lot of fun going up there. So when the first Dotson came to America, it was probably 1968. 68 and a half, and they had the car out until 1973. When they first introduced Nissan to the United States, um, I guess they didn't think that Nissan would be like that great of a name, obviously, because like World War II and stuff like that. So they thought the name Datsun would be a little more easier to pronounce for people. And they actually started modeling these cars for every day just to kind of like drive around, and no one liked them. It didn't pick up in the 70s at all. It was actually considered the poor man's BMW because it resembles an E30 like a lot. It ended up being pushed towards like moms to drive, because that's a lot of what I get when I drive around. There'll be like some old lady driving like a Corolla and she'll roll down her window and smile at me and be like, I used to drive one of these, you know, back in the day. And I think that's what makes, really makes me smile. When an old lady like pulls up next to you and like knows the car you're driving and just like kind of gawks at it for a minute, I think like everybody's got to smile at like that. Honestly, recently uh, Dotsons have just come into its own more. Like it's been getting a lot of attention. I think what really made it stood out was Jay Leno having a car. It was a 510. I think one of his production crew had a Dotson 510. Most of the Dotson community were like, oh no. Now my Datsun's gonna cost like this much more. But I mean, I, I kind of get upset when people say that because for the most part, you should be happy that you know 
your community or you know the type of car that you're into is getting that attention because it basically allows the car community to grow you know different people bring different builds you know new things that maybe someone like I said like for the most part everybody's done you know what could be done to this car but you know maybe there's that one guy that you don't know and he's just gonna change the game but he doesn't you know if he doesn't know about the car how can he ever know that it exists I think the big thing with our community here in San Diego is like for the most part we respect each other's builds. I usually get like a thumbs up, or like a peace sign. Like, you know, we acknowledge each other's builds. If I see a modified car driving on the freeway, I don't care if it's, you know, a pimped out Lexus that's VIP, or if it's a Honda that just has a modified exhaust, you know. They're putting in their effort into the culture and kind of like saying, you know, like, hey, like, I'm, I'm trying. And I think that's what we need to do more, is just like, hey, respect each other a little bit. And, you know, I'll drive by a Honda, I'll give them a thumbs up, like, nice job, because like, that's what I always wanted to do, like when I was growing up. Like I would drive by somebody and I'd give them a thumbs up. And it seems like, it seems like a little kid, like when you're driving and you see like a big semi truck and you just want them to, you know, honk the horn. So you just do the little motion. And I feel like that when I see a modified car. Like I just like, you know, rev the engine, show it off. You know, that's, that's what it's there for. For the rims, it's uh, SSR XR4 long champs, 14 by seven, zero offset all the way around. They're basically your classic old school JDM rims. Purchased them online. Uh, I think I called the guy and he didn't even speak any English, so it was really hard to communicate. But uh, I asked him if it had center caps. And he was like, oh no, sorry sir, no center caps. And I was like, okay, no problem. And I open it up and it's like a treasure hunt because I found the center caps. Because when you look for long champ center caps, uh, you don't find them. I think actually Super Street did an article on it about like rare JDM parts to have and they showed a box of Longchamp hubcaps in there. And I was just like, I have those in my house. Like, and a lot of people kind of look at me funny because I run with them on all the time and I don't take them off or anything like that, which, I mean, I guess I could get jack, but if it just happens, you know, whatever, I, I still drive the car. Like it's not gonna affect the way it drives, but it's just like one of those little things that I hope people respect. So the motor is an SR20 DET. We built the bottom end. We upgraded the turbo. We went with a 7960 Tomei. It has no tune yet. I mean, we have Power FC, and then the fuel system's all set up for 85, and then we're gonna get it tuned at Apex, and once we're all done, it's gonna be around 400 horsepower. 400 horsepower on a 2,500 pound car. Pretty fun, dangerous. At a time, I wanted to sell my car. I kinda had a change of heart. It just, I mean, the amount of time that I put into the build, and basically, like, all the memories I had from it. I just, I don't think now I could part ways with it. I think it's, it's part of me, you know? It's basically like your baby. When I kind of drive the car just around town, uh, I basically daily the car. Uh, so it doesn't matter if I'm going to get groceries or if I'm going to visit a friend, I just drive the car. It makes me smile every time I drive the car. It sounds kind of corny, but I think most enthusiasts will understand, like, I'm happy to wake up and get into my car and start it up and drive on the freeway. Cruising down San Diego coast, it's just gorgeous and just being in a car, you know, windows rolled down, exhaust blaring, people staring. I don't want to be that guy that's known that has a car and like, someone gives a honk or a thumbs up and I'm that kind of like, you know, guy that doesn't really acknowledge them. Like, I, I love acknowledging people when they give my car props. I'm, I'm usually humble with it. It's a nostalgic feeling. I drive the car in memory of my son. He's my co-pilot, you know? Uh, as a dad, I kind of just, my son's with me every, every minute of the way as I build these cars and drive these cars. And every time I get compliments on these cars, I tell people, you know, they're not my cars, they're my son's car. Eventually, as he got older, they, were, they would be his cars from my Corolla 86 to his Nissan to any future projects.